to our good friend uh, Freddie Coleman, who I know is looking forward to the start of the NFL season and joins us here on Big Board Sports. Freddie, Roger Weiland in Albany. Good morning, bud. Hey, good morning, Roger. Always good to talk to you, my friend. How are you? I was locked into you again last night, my friend. Locked in. Oh, so you're the one. I've yeah. been looking for you. Where you been? <laughs> right around, right around twelve fifteen on the way home from the uh, the mighty one three. And, and uh, you were you were wall to wall NFL, and you can't go wrong, right, Freddie? This time of the year, I think everyone is looking forward to cranking this thing up. Preseason is over, and you got Denver and Carolina ready to roll tomorrow night, big time. Yeah, I, and Roger, you make a great point about people being wired up for the season because we always say the NFL is usually wide open every year. And I think this year, we, we kind of seen a sea change where I think there are four teams that look to be, that separate themselves from everybody else. And I think those four teams are Pittsburgh, also New England, the Seattle Seahawks, and the Arizona Cardinals. And then there's a second tier of teams. But I think those four right now have established themselves going into the season that they are the four best teams in the NFL. I heard you guys discussing last night, and it's a good discussion here because we get a ton of Giants fans. They trained here, Freddie, as you know, for 16 years. And We've spent some time this uh, summer, I have, at the Giants camp. What do you make of the NFC Eastern Division? Well, I'll say this. I mean, usually with that division, you're going to have to have a great and outstanding quarterback play. But I think for the first time in a long time, this division may not have the defenses that we're used to seeing. There's still questions about Washington and their defense. The Giants spent over $200 million to improve their defense. I mean, they couldn't get any worse than they were last year. But you wonder how that's going to come together. We know about the question that Dallas has on defense with that lack of pass rusher, and the Eagles are still an unknown. It may look like a lot of arena football league games in the NFC East because I think the offenses, whether it's the Giants or Washington, Dallas, no matter what Dak Prescott does, they have that offensive line that's among the best in football. I think Ezekiel Elliott is going to be a terrific rookie running back for the Dallas Cowboys. This could be the first time in a long time where we may not see anybody play real good defense in the NFC East, and the one that does, if they're able to play passable defense, that's going to be the team that's going to win that division. You think the Giants can win that division? I think they can because their offense, I know they struggled in the preseason. I never placed a lot of faith or a lot of stock in preseason because I don't know what they're doing at practices, but usually teams that struggle in the preseason games they're working on different things to get ready for the regular season. And this offense last year was a top-10 offense in the National Football League, and I think they're going to be better with Victor Cruz coming back a lot better from injury. Keep an eye on Sterling Shepard, the young wide receiver out of Oklahoma. I think he could be the next great slot receiver in the National Football League. If they can get anybody, whether you got Damon Harrison, they call him snacks in the middle of the defense, Olivier Vernon rushing the pass on the outside, if they can get that defense near 20th in the NFL, and I think it's possible – I think the Giants will be able to win this division, and that's been my pick to win the division based on their offense, and I think their defense will be, it has to be so much better than it was last year. Freddie Coleman, ESPN Radio, with us here on uh, Big Board Sports in Albany, uh, 104.5 the team. Freddie, how about the uh, Patriots? They open up tough game. they got to play uh, at Arizona. I, I think Arizona should be good again, although they got a big target on their back then. No one's going to take Arizona lightly. But uh, how many games do you see this New England team, Freddie, winning with Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback? I could see them going 3-1, and one, and I'm with you, Roger. That's a tough assignment. You go in there on Sunday night against that Arizona Cardinals defense, and for the first time in that franchise's history, the Arizona Cardinals will beat the hunted instead of the hunter, so I can't wait to see how they're going to deal with that. But they're so outstanding on defense, they're so outstanding on offense. That's going to be a tough environment for Jimmy Garoppolo to go into with still questions on the offensive line and the running game. You know, I think the Patriots' defense will be really good. But then they have the next three games at home after that. And don't think for one second that Bill Belichick won't have him coached up for those three games. And he's going to have him coached up anyway for opening night because you know Bill Belichick hears everything. And I'm sure he's made that a point to say to his team, People don't believe without that number 12 over there that we can go in and beat them. Well, let's see about that. I still think the Pages go 3-1, and one, no worse than 2-2 two and two in their first four games. And if they go 3-1, and one, Roger, I think they're going to win no less than 11 or 12 games and win the AFC East once again. If they're, let's say by some strange thing they go 4-0, and oh, then I think the road through the AFC will have to go through New England because I could see this team potentially being a 13-win team and having the best team in the AFC. But I, I got them going 3-1. and one. I don't think they'll lose any of those home games, even though I think they'll lose on Sunday night versus Arizona. 
Hey, Freddie. Zach By hanging out here with Roger in studio. I got to ask you about this Jared Goff story. When is the last time the number one overall pick in the NFL draft, especially at the QB spot, not only isn't going to start week one, but isn't active for week one? Yeah, you got to be very careful, Zach, with quarterbacks, especially when, A, he's the number one pick in the draft, as you mentioned, and, B, you're relocating where you're going back to Los Angeles and there's going to be so much pop and circumstance. And Jeff Fisher has done this before because when he had Steve McNair, who was the number two pick in the draft with the Houston Oilers, he didn't play him for the first year. Chris Chandler got all the starts until he felt Steve McNair was ready, and there were plenty of games that year where Steve McNair was inactive. But I don't think I can remember in recent memory where you have a guy that you drafted him, you're bringing him in to be the face of your franchise, to be the new leader of your team. And this is a clear indication of two things to me. Number one, of course, he's not ready. Jeff Fisher's not going to put a quarterback out there if he doesn't believe he's ready to go out there and be a, a viable component to his football team. But also, I think the most important thing is, I think Jeff Fisher wants to make sure that Jared Goff, with all the bright lights and big city atmosphere of the first year of being back in Los Angeles as a Rams organization, I don't think he wants to put that kind of spotlight on him and then retard his progress, whatever progress he's been able to make in preseason. So I think he's doing that for the sanctity of his organization. Plus, Jeff Fisher doesn't have to worry about being in a hot seat. They've already talked about him and the general manager getting less need getting extensions. So they know that the ownership is going to give them a little bit more leeway and a little bit more room before Jared Goff is ready and the Rams are ready to do some things in the NFC West. I think if they finished, uh, Freddie Coleman with us, Roger Weiland, Zach By, uh, 104.5, uh, the team here on Big Board Sports. I, I had our, uh, our, our producer, uh, Matt Hogan, look up the uh, win-loss total of Jeff Fisher because we had a discussion about whether we would consider him a good coach, mediocre coach. I think his teams have been in that... 500 range over the years. Well, here's the win-loss total, Freddie. 168, 155, and one regular season record over 21 seasons for Jeff Fisher. Yeah, 15 years he's he's been a coach of teams that have not made the playoffs. Yeah. And yet Jeff Fisher has been able to stay as a head coach in, with the Rams organization because they ran Tom Coughlin out of New York because he had made the playoffs ever since the Giants got to a Super Bowl, and he had two Super Bowl championships on his resume. I'm not saying that Jeff Fisher is not a good coach, but at a certain point, 15 years out of 21 in which your teams have not made the playoffs, you've had more of 500 seasons than winning seasons, and yet you're not in danger of losing your job. So I don't know if he has pictures of the ownership or whatever he has, but whatever he has in his (laughs) possession that he is going to use, the Rams believe that he is the guy, but at a certain point, I mean, we got Marvin Lewis on the hot seat in Cincinnati because they have not won a playoff game, but Cincinnati's clearly a better team than what we've seen from the Rams in the years that Jeff Fisher has been there. When does that message stop getting through and ownership will wake up and say, okay, Jeff Fisher is a good guy, but we need a different coach and a different mindset right now. All right, Freddie, it sounds like you, you're taking the Giants. You think they can win the NFC East, Patriots to win the AFC East, which a lot of people will agree with. And I'll, I'll go through our final two regional teams of interest. What kind of seasons do you think the Jets will have and the Buffalo Bills will have? I think both of those teams will go 8-8, eight and eight, uh, no worse than 7-9. and nine. Buffalo better play better defense because if they're not able to play better defense, then Rex Ryan will be having another job next season because they brought him in to be that defensive mastermind, and they did not look like a good defensive team last year. So I think 7-9, and 8-8 and for the Buffalo Bills, and I got the same record for the New York Jets. Defensively, I think the Jets are going to be really, really good. Keep an eye on Leonard Williams, their second-year defensive tackle out of USC. I mean, Muhammad Wilkerson gets a lot of attention, and he should. He's one of the best interior linemen in the National Football League. Look for Sheldon Richardson to bounce back. But Leonard Williams is going to be a bear in the middle of that defense. That defense will be really good. I just wonder about Ryan Fitzpatrick. I know how special he was last year, but I still look back at that third and fourth quarter in the final game of the regular season. I said, okay, that's the Ryan Fitzpatrick I thought I would see more often with the Jets. No one can expect that he's going to get you 31 touchdown passes like he did last year where he was the MVP of that football team. I think he'll regress a little bit and be the, a little bit be the Ryan Fitzpatrick we're used to seeing, and that will be that will be the unnerving for the New York Jets where they won't get the 10 wins. I think they go 8-8 eight eight as well. Freddie, do you have any teams out there that you think are a little overrated here in the preseason and some that are falling a little underrated that you think will have a big season that maybe we're not giving enough love to? Well, the one team that I think is a little overrated are the Denver Broncos. I think a lot of people, Roger, have a lot of faith in Trevor Simeon that he's going to step in and play better at quarterback. 
that a guy's one of the three greatest quarterbacks in the history of the National Football League and Peyton Manning. He has not thrown a regular season pass. I'm thinking, okay, so you're thinking he's going to step in and this offense is going to be better because that defense is going to be outstanding. I don't think there's any doubt about that. So I think that's the one team that people are talking about being a playoff team or winning their division that is a little overrated in my estimation when it comes to the Denver Broncos. I'll give you a team that's underrated that a lot of people aren't talking about, but they really, really should. I honestly believe for the first time in a long time that the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to make an impact. They're not going to win a division, wow. but they're going to be a lot better. I think offensively, Blake Bortles last year, second in the National Football League in touchdown passes. He had the Allen brothers, meaning Allen Robinson and Allen Hearns, maybe the best duo at wide receiver in the National Football League that nobody knows about. Keep an eye on them and definitely keep an eye on the Oakland Raiders. I think the Raiders team are good enough to win the division and get into the playoffs for the first time in 13 years. And, and Freddie, my, my producer, uh, Zach, by, wanted me to ask you before I let you go. Good question here. What is a Sunday like at Freddie, at Freddie Coleman's house? Oh, let, let me tell you. Well, I already have <laughs> NFL Sunday tickets, so I drive my wife out of the house. Let's put it that way. She's like, okay, that's too much football for me, number one. But believe me, I have all that going on. I, I try to make sure I don't wind up what I call in fat Albert mode, where you sit on the couch, you're just eating all the time, and then you look up, you gain 20 pounds in one Sunday. So I try to make sure that doesn't happen. But believe me, it is wall-to-wall football every Sunday from 1 p.m. pretty much until 11.30 at night. So that's what goes on. But if you hear any news reports, that Freddie Coleman was not able to leave his living room, had to be extricated <laughs> off the couch. That's why I ate way too much with all the football that's going on. <laughs> that's good stuff. Hey, Freddie, we always appreciate a few minutes, and uh, hopefully we can hook up with you throughout the course of the season as well, and uh, always listen to you here uh, on, on ESPN Radio uh, in Albany and 104.5 The Team. Hey, Roger, you know you're my man. Always glad to be on with you guys and can't wait to do it again soon. You have a great day. Thanks, Freddie. You too, too Freddie. Freddie, uh, Freddie Coleman. Listen to him uh, 10 to 1 every night uh, right here on 104.5.